So, so as you know, I moved back to Ohio from living in New York City for seven years. What you grew up an hour north of the city. So what was it like to live not in the city, but close enough to enjoy the city? What was that like? Yeah, yeah that's what I always say. I like that I lived close by to get some of those perks, yeah. but I think it's good I didn't grow up in the thick of it because yeah. it's a lot. So you're close enough to pop in for a Yankee game and then leave and go back home or whatever it might be, right? Whatever fun, exciting thing, but then go back home where it's a little bit quieter, slower pace, tighter knit community. Yeah. Um, it is one of those towns. And I think still probably to this day where if you said, oh, do you know so-and-so? Yeah. There's a high likelihood you probably know so-and-so on some level. And I like, there's some like comfort familiarity. So, I thought it was a great location. It's beautiful, like right on the Hudson River, just geographically a, a beautiful place. But then you have the city just like right over there, but not in your face. So oh. <laughs> that was good. I think it was, I don't know if I appreciated it at the time. Yeah. Like at, as I can say it now, but when I look back and I'm like, yeah, that was, that was a good town. Yeah. Still have family yeah. there? I do. My parents are still there in the home I grew up in, as is my sister and her family. Um, and then still family in the general area, very northern Jersey, some Rockland County, et cetera. And many of my friends are in the area, too. Cool. So you get back at all most times, not really? or We get, we're up there, I would say probably quarterly. Oh, so wow. pretty, re pretty regular. I mean, it's not too bad of a drive if you do it at the right time. <laughs> and if you if you've lived there, you know when the right times are. It's like, well, I get across the Tappan Sea Bridge. That's what I need yes. to do. It has it can be a very long drive or it can be pretty good. So yeah, we're up pretty regularly. We'll be going up just in a couple of weeks. My nephew um is having um an event. He's having his confirmation. So we'll be driving up for that. Right. And yeah, so different uh, holidays and just visits because, so we get up regularly, yeah. Yeah. So I thought we could be friends, but you're a Yankees fan. And <laughs> I'm, I'm a Dyer Reds fan. So, you know, I go back to the Big Red Machine and in 76 and, we, you know. But so <laughs> going up a Yankees fan. I mean, yeah, Yankees. Uh, I mean, so Yankees, Giants, probably rangers right i don't know about yes that. hockey in my particular household was not as big as the other i mean yankees is the day the giants as well um would be close second as far as like yeah importance in sports yeah uh hockey less so in my family but yes it would be like not the islanders or anything it, it would be it would be rangers yeah, for sure cool. yeah so yeah when i was there i i worked on uh, long halfway out Long Island and like Hempstead and then into Islip and uh, everybody was Islander fans out there and then of mm -hmm. course Staten Island Staten Island there were probably more Jersey Devil fans on Staten Island okay. than there yeah, were because south, south, south yeah because we were south yeah. and it was easier really to get to Jer to Newark yeah. than it was to get into into the city so um yeah, so I mean, you've been to the house that Babe built and all of that. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've been that, by. I've never been in, but I've been by, of course. So. Yeah, so I mean, that was. It sounds almost silly, but it's like you. That was just like wasn't a choice. It mm -hmm. wasn't like what what baseball team do I like? Mm -hmm. It was like we are Yankees. Fans. We don't ask that question in our household, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, it's like that's just what you are, and I have. Yeah, I mean, memories of the, just the games always on, um, just all, yeah, just always on and just watching that. And that's, you know, you want your guys in pinstripes to do well. This season is a little bit painful to watch. <laughs> right. It's like, um, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, right. you know, but yeah. Um, yeah, my favorite favorite player, Bernie Williams, yeah, prior nice. center fielder. Um, actually, someone, speaking of the city, a neighbor of ours uh, worked in the city. He would commute back and forth. And I don't know if you know, Bernie Williams plays classical guitar. Yeah. 
And so he, for I think it was for my high school graduation, he was somehow able to get, Bernie was signing uh, autographs of like CDs. So I have an autographed CD of his. And that's like, that was the cool, that was super cool. I mean, yeah. every time I could pick a number in sports, whether it was like basketball, I was always 51. That was his number. Just yeah. like, he is, it, he's it for me. And there's so many good Yankees, but for something I always like resonated with him and his, I mean, just had such an, a positive, like kind presence. Yeah. And he was an awesome baseball player, yeah. but yeah, Yankees, that's a big, that's a big deal. <laughs> and yeah. and then Giants. I think Giants, I think as a family, we got into it maybe, or maybe I just got into it a little bit later. I didn't really understand it. You know, I played softball, Little League, all the way up through high school yeah. growing up. So football, I t- maybe it's a little bit hard for me to understand. So at first I was kind of like, what is this? But now Giants, and you're like, you, you just bleed blue. So that's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So my connection with the Giants is, I'm, you know, I spent some time living in New Orleans and was a huge Manning fan of the family. Oh, and, yeah. So Eli, you know, and so... I I rooted for the Giants when I was in town because yeah because of Eli and so and then yeah. back in the day growing up and then even in my early adult that they're, they're not anymore but the AAA team baseball team in Columbus the Clippers for the longest time were yeah. the Yankees AAA so I was I'd go to games and watch Mariano before he moved up and Jeter and so yeah, we'd cool. see them coming through or if they came down to rehab and they mm-hmm. were in town and. So yeah, so my Yankees connection was was pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah that, and, and for a lot less money. <laughs> for, for a lot <laughs> less, less money. Less they're, going, money. <laughs> they're going to Yankee Stadium, right? Which is probably the reason I never got there. I was like, man, I'd look a ticket because the Reds had come into town or something, and I'm like, oh, that no, I got. Yeah, we'll watch on TV. That's fine. Yeah, right. Because it's going to take me six hours to get to the Bronx to begin with for me, yeah. you know. And yeah, no, I'll pass. So yeah. Um, school catholic school up to and then um public high school how was the transition mm-hmm. what was it like to transition from private to public school what what's that like yeah so i had a great experience at both it's so funny when something comes up I'm like well i went to catholic school and people are like oh you know what i mean it's like oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm gonna, <laughs> like they assume i'm gonna say like and it was terrible <laughs> but it was that, I mean, it was a great school. It was a core group of kids from the time I was four or five years old till I graduated. And it's kind of like another family. Um, it was a great, it was a great experience. I loved that school. Transitioning to high school was a little intimidating because I think there were 20 kids in my eighth grade class. And then you go to ninth grade. Not that it was a huge high school, probably somewhere between 180 or 200 kids in my class. And it was, you know, then five grades at that time. Actually, our high school starts at eighth grade. So I could have gone, but I didn't. So that's a big, that's a big difference. Um, Luckily, because I had done activities in the community, Little League, Girl Scouts throughout the years, I knew, I at least had some familiar faces. And a couple of girls that I had gone to elementary and whatnot with were going as well. but the whole idea of like changing classrooms, that was the biggest thing. I was like, I'll get lost. And you have a certain amount of time or like four minutes. And I'm like, how in the world am I going to get here to, he-? you know, and like the, the idea of like lockers and change. That was totally foreign to me. It seemed very overwhelming. But well, I've just always, I guess I'm, I don't, I love school. I've always loved school. Um, I was very lucky in both to find great friends um I also I had a little bit of a head start because I joined the cross-country team I don't know why I'd never run I just decided yeah I could could do that it's fine yeah um so we had started practices this uh, month or two maybe before leading up to high school actually started and I met who still to this day is my best friend Jessica um nice on that team so I had like a little I cheated a little bit but still, it was a it was a big change. It was like, whoa, okay, this is cool. Um, but I don't think it took me too long to to kind of settle in. So I did all right, I guess. Good. And I loved I loved high school too. Yeah, I loved high school. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And then, so where does being a nurse come into play? Yeah, I I think I'm a little bit odd in that so many nurses will say well 
maybe for many reasons. But in this particular, <laughs> for this particular this reason, case, let me let me. This particular case, um, a lot. Of, I knew I always wanted to be a nurse. So many people say I knew from as soon, you know, as my earliest memory is I was going to be a nurse. I was, I was not that. I went through a number of different. I was going to be a hairstylist. I had name. I had my own company name and like logo. I thought I might be a teacher for a while, interior yeah. designer. Yeah. I have no skill for that. So it's good that I, um, my longest dream action, I still have it in my heart of hearts somewhere, was to be like a chorus girl on Broadway. Yeah. I was actually a dance minor um, in college. I danced all through um, growing up. Alas, um, I realized I really enjoyed science in high school, particularly biology. Um, so I had the opportunity to take AP bio. So I took, I took that. And I had kind of kicked around the idea of I like science. I would you know, community service. I always liked being around senior citizens too. And I was like, I'm going to do something with geriatrics. But it seemed very intimidating to make a decision. Like, I'm going to be a nurse. Like, people's lives will depend on that. That, to me, I was like, I don't think I'm ready for that. I can't do that. Um, also, growing up, though, I had two excellent role models for nurses, an aunt and a great aunt. Um, they have done everything in nursing you could think of they're now just recently both retired but from school nursing to flight nurses to radiology to er to burn unit i mean you name it and like you know we get in family gatherings and they're telling their stories and everyone else is like Whoa. you know like we're, we're trying to eat the green beans and right. i'm like oh. yeah right. you know i'm like fascinated and yeah. totally inspired by them so i kind of always had that in the back of my mind but i just was like i cannot commit to nursing school right now, like it seems too much, seemed too hard. So I found a um, bachelor's of science in health promotion at American. And I was like, you know what? Sciencey, helping people, but it seemed safe, like a little safer maybe. <laughs> so safer. kind of like, safer. I'll ease, I'll ease. Safer than being a chorus line <laughs> answer, safer, right. <laughs> See, I'll ease into this thing. Great program, great experience at AU. I would say about halfway through. So probably by the time I was entering junior year there, I was like, I will be going back for nursing. Like it kind of like, yeah. like clicked. Like I love all this stuff, but imagine like with a nursing degree and that additional knowledge, yeah. what more I, you know, what I would else I, I would have to offer, what other skill sets I would have, et cetera. So I kind of knew at, before I even graduated there, I was like, well, I'll, there's more schooling for me. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. But I think I'm glad I did it the way I did um because nursing school is tough <laughs> and so i don't know if i had made that decision right. right away maybe i would not have like pushed through it i don't yeah. know it's hard to say yeah. AU was a good experience for you or AU was excellent um yeah i had a lot of great professors i mean i had always said i'm going to school in dc for a lot for years and years i was like i'm going to school in dc and that happened to be a school my guidance counselor in high school recommended yeah I'd, I'd only applied to like three colleges and she was like, I think I need to apply to more colleges. How about this one? And I was like, mm, okay, sure. I applied, visited. I just got a good feel from the camp, like energy. I don't know. I like to feel a certain energy. It seemed great. Um, so the location, I was like, DC, check. <laughs> Had this health promotion program, which you don't find necessarily any, right. yeah, yeah. everywhere, especially, I mean, this is, I started, when the heck did I start college? 2003. So health promotion thing, it was even fewer and far between. So I was like, okay, that's good. Um, yeah, had a, had a great experience. Um, many of my closest friends still to this day I met, you know, cause I feel like we're, you're, you move to this dorm, right? And you're like, immediately you're like latch onto you and you cause you don't know anyone else. You're like, yeah, right. oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. who are you? Okay, we're friends now. You know what I mean? It's like- Forever, like yeah, forever. forever that's right. it. Um, and in fact, the very first friend that I made, he lived on my floor. He is now the godfather to my middle child. Oh, um, awesome. He's, I mean, he's, he is, fa I mean, he's family now. Um, I met my husband as well. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, yeah. that's obviously family nice. Now, right? like, <laughs> yeah, family now, right? Yeah, family now as well. So, yeah, I really enjoyed, um, I enjoyed AU, got to do some fun activities. I was in acapella group um, and some other things. So, yeah, I like, I'd go back. Uh, you go back, are you good? Are you thinking about, would you ever go back to school for more school? So I attempted more school. <laughs> <laughs> I, I attempted. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, complicated answer to that very simple question. <laughs> I had actually, this would be going back now, probably nine years ago. Okay. I was going to go back for a master's of science in nursing at UVA and concentration in public health nursing. I enrolled, I, oh, I got accepted, enrolled, and about three days later, I found out I was expecting my son. Oh. And I went, can't do it all. Can't work school first time mom. I just was like, too much, too much. So I said, okay, school another time. Fast forward years and other more children. Yeah. <laughs> and things. I was like, you know what? Maybe, maybe now I'll think about school again. Um, that program, I think, you know, not accepting students at the time. So I don't know what's going on with that. So I started looking elsewhere got accepted actually just about a year ago. I started again, similar type program, different school, um, made it through, I said made it through, completed about one and a half semesters and it just was not what I wanted, yeah. which was terribly disappointing because it's yeah. all I wanted for so long. I want this program in community and public health nursing, this is it. And it took me about eight weeks into the second semester, which would have been like my second and third classes. And I'm like, I'm not feeling like engaged in this. I'm not feeling motivated about this. I wasn't feeling challenged by it either. And so I felt like it was just a lot of busy work. And I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, what am I, what am I putting my time and money into and energy? Right, yeah, so, yeah. Well, it, that was a tough decision. Cause I'm like, well, I could just ride this thing out. I was going pretty slowly. So it's going to take another couple years, but I was like, I don't think I should. So tough decision, right decision, yeah. you know, said nope to that as well. And so we'll see. I don't know. I'm just got to kind of, I guess, recalibrate a little bit. Maybe what I thought I want isn't what I want. <laughs> you know? yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Or isn't what you want now in this point in, life, yeah. in where you are yep. today. Yeah. No, and that's fair. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I have, so in my office here, right, I got a, right, I have a, right, this, for the medical profession, I have a snake on a stick, look at that. Oh, of course you do, yes. Of course I do, right, right. Um, who doesn't, you know, it's like, whatever, I don't know. Mine is in a different room. It's in a different room. I would show you my snake on a stick it's if I had over it. over there. <laughs> I have a pen, but I can't find that this morning either, but that's all right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the last um, the last person I talked to lived in Denver for a while, and you have a Denver connection as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. My husband is from Colorado, not from Denver, very yeah. southwest Colorado near uh, New Mexico border. And but he now has well, my mother in law lives there. One brother part time, another brother of my husband's lives there. And when I graduated nursing school, um, about a month, I took my boards, uh, my NCLEX, and I think the next day we were in our moving truck driving <laughs> driving to Denver so that when my husband could do his master's, so he got his master's of accountancy at University of Denver. Yeah. Um, we lived there for just about I think, 18, 19 months. Okay. And, wow. then we, and then we came back east. And, then you and came we back visited. The coast. Yeah. yeah, we came we came back. Um, I'm East Coast girl. It's it's hard to, no Yankees fans in Denver. Hard to break me of that. <laughs> right, right, we, right. we came back. We mutually agreed that we would come back. Mutually agreed that. for the family. For the family, <laughs> we came back. Right. Yes, but and we, you know, we visit not as often as we're visiting my side of the family in New family. York. But right, yeah, right. every one to two years, we are in Colorado, either in Denver or um, outside of Durango, where he's from. So we're we're there still. Probably will be there end of the year for the holidays. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of family, um, how's being a mom? <laughs> As you sit there, you know, we're sitting, right, right. Yeah. I mean, look at, hmm. this is my Zoom room. <laughs> I know. Probably. I don't, I'm curious. Has anyone had a sat in front of their crib? Or not in my not, not with me, but I, you know, I mean, it's like I, you know, right, right. It's like I thought, oh, this is cool. We're, we'll get to it in a moment. Yeah, yeah, that's a cool setting. Yeah, it's real life. Just this real life. Real life. Yeah. It's real life. Yeah. Right. Um, we live in in a two bedroom apartment. There's five of us. So I have three kids. We live in a two bedroom apartment. My husband works from home, 
yeah. and a maintenance person was coming to fix something in our bathroom which is connected to our other bedroom which i normally would have sat at but oh, i was okay. like you know what i'll be in here <laughs> it's, just, it's just how comfy. it is it's <laughs> nice it's comfy i've got i've got a big pillow it's okay it's like <laughs> might take a nap in between right. you know? we could take a nap time in the middle of this that's all right yeah it's that um, time of day yeah how in being a mom i mean it's every i in a way it's everything i mean it in in makes you feel everything Ooh. being a mom has made me feel the absolute highest of highs and probably the lowest of lows i would say yeah. <laughs> sometimes on the same day <laughs> depending on what's going on yeah. um and it it is it has challenged me and i mean because you can't predict you you could talk to some oh when you're a mom this and that i mean just from being pregnant birth i mean to everything right. you can tell someone your experiences or your but until you're like in it you there you can't truly prepare for something like that yeah and every child is unique right so you're like oh yeah we've been through this before with one two and now it's three and you're like ah oh, but not with this child <laughs> right so it's it's obviously never boring um but like those are my people but like truly like literally those are my like we call them bunnies i they're each their bunnies hopefully someday yeah. they won't watch this and be totally embarrassed by that because now my son's eight and he's like mom so today was first day of school for my older two mom if you drop me off or pick me up to school today and like think you're gonna give me a big hug and kiss and get a little teary about you know because it was my first day like that's really gonna embarrass me and i'm like we're there already <laughs> we're at the embarrassing phase already yeah oh my gosh i thought i had more time yeah um i just studied yeah, I mean, I, I, right i mean it's like yeah it's crazy i'm like was i like that at eight maybe i don't know my god i guess i gotta ask my mom but yeah i mean being a mom it, it's it's my favorite thing it's my hardest thing um it i continually need to improve yeah <laughs> right yeah. i mean <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm probably messing up countless things a day as a mom, but I will say at least I hope it is my mission that my, there's not a day goes by that my children will doubt if I love them. Right. Like that, that's, if I've yeah. done that, I'm like, okay. Yeah, everything else we can get through. Right. Yeah. <laughs> We're figuring it out. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or we won't. And that's okay too. You know, <laughs> we'll, so we won't we'll, right out together. <laughs> right, we'll just. We're just going to move on. We can't figure this out. Well, it's okay, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, but that's cool. Um, yeah. But so age wise, you've got eight and eight, six, and then the baby tomorrow will be twenty months. I don't oh, know. If I still call her that's so awesome. It makes me feel better to call her a baby. It makes her still seem tiny, but back she back. reminds me every day as she's learning more and more words and doing more things that she's definitely a toddler, but that's oh, okay. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's right. It's like, we, well, I'm no longer your baby. I'm right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she's a big oh, girl wow. now. So, but yep. You, your um, day job is beyond being a mother and a wife and all of that. Um, you are a coordinator, a wellness coordinator for an organization. Mm -hmm. Um, so what gets you from nursing into, I mean, I, well, yeah, what gets you into wellness? What, what do you like yeah. about being well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I kind of, like I said, you know, I thought health promotion and nursing was such a great compliment because so much of nursing at its core is education, right? right. Whatever setting you're in, whether you're in hospital setting, let's say you're a, a school nurse, um, like I am in an occupational health setting. I mean, there's nurses everywhere. I mean, there's so many vast roles and different roles now for nurses. I, I think at the crux of it is educating whoever your patient population is. Um, and so I was like, health promotion is a lot of health, you know, health education. So I thought it went together so well. I didn't necessarily have in my head, like, once I get this degree and this degree, I'll do X, Y, Z, right? It wasn't plan that way but i thought i'll find something where i can use both of these skill sets right um and the position i'm in now i think i had told you i kind of fell into it 
Right. I was doing, uh, I was in a neuroscience ICU. Just wasn't, it wasn't where I knew in my heart I was meant to be. I learned, I took as much of it, you know, from that as I could, as far as learning. Excellent experience, excellent nurses, excellent unit. Just not where I was meant to be placed as a, as a nurse. That's fine. So I I'm going to really try and figure out what else can I do um, for on the prevention side of things. Cause when you're in the ICU, you're seeing acute illness, right? Right. How can and I just kept thinking like, how could I, was there something that maybe I could have done one or two years ago before this person came in with this traumatic health event? Right. That's right. where my heart was. That's where my passion was. And that was kind of what has always driven me. And I think just in our society, we're very reactive. We're not proactive. We are so focused in our healthcare system on treatment, not prevention. I know some time ago, I don't know if this is still a current statistic, but it was like, you know, two cents of every dollar is prevention. Right. And I'm like, well, heck, all right. Can we get to three cents? Right. Yeah. So that's just always kind of driven me like what can we do to prevent and reach out and and educate and so the job i'm in now um the place was basically looking to start a wellness program and i had some experience in that um before and while i was in nursing school i worked in a couple of different settings i worked in, in um with a nonprofit in dc public housing facilities doing wellness programming for seniors and disabled residents um that was awesome very eye-opening um loved it connected with a lot of awesome people there uh, and then i had done some work more as like a health fitness specialist in various um fitness centers doing incentive programs exercise classes various things like that um, so i had some background of that um and that's kind of where I, f I fell. And that was 10, 10 years ago, next month, wow. coming up on 10 years ago, and was a little bit given like, we want to start a wellness program, what should we do? Okay, <laughs> well, well, IRE <laughs> well, would be one, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I'm trying to then translate the populations I had worked with before to like a work, a work site. Right. in the federal government and um, try to translate some of that, um, learn a new population. Um, and so that's what I've been doing. I mean, health is important. Like what, I don't think it can be us underestimated. Like if you just, or even just something, you just have a headache. Like how does that impact, you know, I mean, that's like, how does that impact your day? How can right. you really thrive, right? We don't want to just live. We want to, we want to thrive. I think most people would agree with that. Yeah. So that's my hope is what tools and motivation can we give people and knowledge and opportunity to to better themselves, right? So yeah. and I use you know health education as a as a means of doing that or I try to do. I yeah. hope I yeah. hope I am. That's, and that's where we've connected. I mean, I've enjoyed the last couple of years, you know, working with you and and trying to you know, see what, what that means. And yeah. And so that's been good for me as well to help me expand what we do, you know, what we do. And that's yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm constantly, you know, just so no one gets bored and I don't get bored. I'm like, what new thing can we do? What right. haven't I thought of before? You know, I mean, there's so talk about wellness. If you're truly looking at it as a holistic oh, model, there's so right. much, there's so much there and it's all interconnected. You're weaker in one area. Right. that pulls me up you know it's it's I, I like that interconnectedness and that holistic approach which i think nursing really is too a whole person person-centered approach um you can't just look at you can't look at someone in isolation right it's what's their environment you know because the definition of wellness that i like to use is functioning optimally in your current environment okay oh nice it's kind of, like yeah. a, kind of broad like well, what does that mean it might be different for everybody right yeah right what so does it mean? What's my environment? Yeah. Yeah. What does my environment look mm -hmm. like? What is optimal for me? You know, so, and, and it's fluid. Everything, you know, it's fluid. It's not a, like a static, it's not a static thing. It change. it changes. So, which makes it challenging, but I like it. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Challenging. Um, a healthcare during COVID was exciting. <laughs> sure. 
<laughs> was no, all these flu? It was so good. It was positive. Exciting is usually like woo, exciting. Uh, but yeah, um, I will say this: I am thankful and fortunate that I yes, I was a, a nurse working, but I was not in an acute care setting at that time. I mean, that's obviously where the the real tragedies and all, I mean, all of the nurses and healthcare staff doing that, I mean, that's another level right? for right. sure. But um, I'll say that kind of out of, n not overnight, but very quickly, um, there's a lot of eyes on you <laughs> from your agency. Um, expectation, some pressure um, to, you know, essentially from a, for me as a nurse and our nursing staff lead a, a response to yeah. something you know very little about. Yeah. And the operations of your agency have to keep going. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. that's not even a question. How are we going to keep doing what we apps, you know, what has to be done? Um, given this new thing in the room. So um, yeah, try and you know, you're trying to learn and you know, er, early on this, not the science was new science was coming out all the time, which was right. then new recommendation. And so you're just trying to navigate and keep yourself up to date and people are relying on you for that information. And at some point, I mean, sometimes I feel like, oh, well, you just told me this yesterday or last week, this is what we were doing. Oh, yes, but now new information, new science. CDC <laughs> says this now. We're, <laughs> yeah. we're, pivot, we're pivoting, we're pivoting, <laughs> trying to, you know. Um, but yeah, I I don't think there'll ever be a time like that. I hope it was, I'll say this, I work with awesome people that absolutely came to light, um, resourceful, dedicated, um, yeah, but it was, it was, it was tough. It was, yeah. it was a tough time. There was a lot, the demands were high. Um, and you know, in our, our, my group that I work with, we've always done important stuff for our workforce, right. but it was always kind of like in the background. Now it was like, right. here's this yeah. massive spotlight. Right. And it was like, okay. <laughs> Hey, can we go back to like when we were over over there doing our stuff? In the corner, no one knew yeah. who we were, what we were doing. Exactly. Um, I will say that has changed. I, I think if you can look at silver linings in a way, people are obviously now very aware of us and what we do, and I think are more appreciative and open to it. Yeah. And that has maybe even been a driving force of some of the conversations that are happening about moving towards a culture of wellness and what does that look like? Yeah. So that would be a silver, so maybe a silver lining. Um, but yeah, that was, that was definitely a unique time. I, you know, have not worked so many hour, hours yeah. before. Yeah, and so we, you know, some of the recent conversations you and I have had have been about resiliency. Can you just talk about how you see resiliency? And I mean, I mean, it's building resiliency. That's that's, yeah, last three or four yeah. years have been, yeah, yeah. And it's funny because I feel like so many times terms, oh, it's wellness, it's resilience, and it's like, well, let's define our let's define our terms here. Right. But I feel yeah. like wellness and resiliency are very close, right? I mean if you're wanting to look to function optimally in your current environment, and sometimes your environment is not great, depending on what you have going on, you need to have resiliency to, to not just come out the other side, but what does it look like while you're going through it? Are you still able to live through it, push through it? How are you dealing with it while you're doing it? And, and then once hopefully whatever it is has passed, are you going to continue to thrive? Are you better? You know, what, what do you look like on the other side? So I feel like they're very closely connected. Um, so I don't think you, you can necessarily have one without the other. I would say in past years, we haven't, I think resiliency is new into our conversation where I work newer. Yeah. Um, and I think we're still trying to figure out, okay, what does that look like for us and our mission 
um because that might look like something else if you're working in a different setting or with requirements of yeah. of that um but it's exciting i think it's exciting because it's so f um where was i i was somewhere oh i was at the national wellness conference and there's this conversation about well resiliency you like is are you born with it or not and can you learn it yeah. is it actual skill like uh, not necessarily tangible but is this skill you can learn or is it just you're a resilient person or you're not and it's whatever you're born with do you have it or not yeah. um and the consensus there seemed to be like yes you can teach resiliency yeah and now is that right or wrong i don't know but that was kind of the general consensus yeah. of of the folks there and i never really had thought about it in that term and so what's kind of happening in our agency is I think they're latching onto this. We think it can be taught too. at least we're going to try. <laughs> we're going to try at least set some yeah. foundation in place. Um, and they're looking at it from like a curriculum training um, standpoint mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. touch points throughout someone's career and having that closely um, tied to wellness programs. Yeah. I think I think we're gonna have really from both of those going forward. So I think that's that's pretty cool. It I mean it doesn't happen overnight, right? <laughs> like we, we've got the work. Oh, there's a work ahead of us, but definitely yeah. worth that work. And, and, and the model we have is raising children. Isn't that what? I mean, let's think about it. It is. I mean, the model we have is we are trying to to help our children be more resilient in their current life settings right now. Yeah. I mean, that's the model we have for adults. Yeah. The, to that's build true. resiliency yeah. in adults, the model is what do we what do we do with our children? What are we saying to our kids? Yeah. 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 What are we yeah. what are we trying to instill upon our, our youth and just translate that into the adult world? Yeah, might be the answer. I I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. We got to start somewhere, right? Right. We got to start. Somewhere. We got to pick. I mean, pick a play. I know everybody's like, I don't know where to start. I, it doesn't matter. Start somewhere. Just start. Yeah. And we'll get to where we need to get to. I mean, this is, you know, this was, you know, my experience in COVID. It's like we, we just need to pick a place to start, and yeah. we'll we'll get to the right place. Yeah, otherwise, but, we'll never start. <laughs> or, right. We'll just be paralyzed by the process, and we can't. Yeah. We don't have the ability to do that be paralyzed by the process. Yeah, absolutely. We got to keep moving forward. <laughs> we got to keep moving yeah. forward, right? Um, important question. Okay. Ready? How many pairs of socks do you have, Stephanie? So thankfully you gave me the uh, a little bit of a heads up and I like to be prepared. So I know I have a few pairs in the laundry because believe it or not, there's always laundry to do here. Right, right. So my rough estimate would be about 62. 62 pairs now I don't know if it's a lot or a little I, I I don't know I you know what do you think that's a lot or is that right do you need you know I just ordered just yesterday you know two more pairs of kilt long kilt socks so and I've got a lot so I, I'm not the one to ask about socks you know okay I'm comfortable with that amount <laughs> but I think it's it's certainly more socks than one person needs, right? I do not require 62 right. pairs, but I love a holiday sock. <laughs> I mean, Christmas, right. winter, yeah, uh, Thanksgiving, Halloween. Recently, someone gifted me a pair of nursing socks. It's got like a stethoscope. Um, yeah. Then you got your workout socks. Then yeah. you just got like your home heavy, fuzzy. I mean... The sock, it's not like a sock is just not a sock is a sock, right? So I like to, have, you know, have socks from all of those. Yeah. So uh, if, you, if you lose one, do you keep this one or does it get dispensed with? What do I you keep do? it. I like to have hope. So um, I a sign keep of it. Hope, right? Like it will show up. Show up. Right. I'm not giving up on you, sock. Come home. Um, so I probably keep that the one um, probably longer than most would. Sometimes, though, too, is if I have a similar pair and then I miss another one, I'll I'll pair them up. Right. 
because it might be still a very good sock. So that's my next question. Do they have to be paired or do you mix and match? Does Do you just put all 62 pairs, 124 socks in a drawer and just pull two random no. out? I'm not that great. Well, <laughs> I need a little more structure than that. Right, that's structure right than that. that. I'm not on purpose mixing and matching okay, socks. Okay. But, you know, if if they each lose their buddy and they're similar in like style or something, I'll, I'll pair them up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, thorns and roses. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and I use this as give me a thorn being a challenge, a rose being an accomplishment um, for you. What would your biggest thorn be? Yeah, so this was just like in life, right? This yeah, in general, or, or whatever you want it to be. This is where this is why I started taking some notes. I said, <laughs> okay, we're getting, we're getting somewhere here. I'm gonna be prepared. <laughs> um, I and what's so interesting because we just almost kind of touched on it, talking about resiliency in kids. Yeah. But I think as a as a parent, instilling good values and self confidence in my children. Oh, okay. Like I take that as a big responsibility like I am like it is it is on me to like have this human being who I would brought into this world like I want them to grow up to be kind-hearted and giving and tolerant and understanding and all of those things and, and like that takes work <laughs> especially when they might be surrounded by things that go against that constantly right. um so I, I mean that that is that is challenging because I think it takes I mean you got a lot of repeating yourself trying to be a model of that and right. sometimes it's hard right sometimes you just don't necessarily always want to do the right thing <laughs> right there's a lot of things right. to distract you from that right but like like hey they're watching me they're listening to me they're intently me. intently yeah. listening yes yes so it's like okay we're gonna we're gonna stay on the path stephanie um you know and trying to help them sort out all the different messages they get from other kids or things they hear any of it they're just sucking it all in right so trying yeah. to help them sort that out um and as they get older it's just gonna get harder i know i know that right i, I know that as you know it's so funny it's like the things you thought were a massive deal when they're new because it, it's all new like oh my gosh, like, what diapers are we going to get? Because if you don't choose, like, the right diaper and wipe, like, right. your child is doomed, right? Like, that right. seems a huge deal. And now I look back at that, and I'm like, oh, that was, okay. But I mean, at the, you're, you're in it at the time. Like, it's all perspective and experience, right? But now as they're, I don't know, they're not even that old, but as they're getting older, they're in school, they're at different activities, whatever, right. it's like the, the parent challenges become my mother always said and i didn't get it at the time as you as you girls i have an older sister as you girls got get older your problems get bigger as right. you get bigger your problems get bigger and i'm like i'm like the perfect child mom i don't understand don't understand, <laughs> what, understand. Do, what, do, what, do, what problems can i problems yeah. um, but now i i see it so i would say just trying to you know instill good values and self-confidence because it's hard there's so many messages right um that tell you like you're not good enough right right that's yeah. hard as an adult um so as a uh -huh. kid who's so impressionable that's because i think if you're more self-confident if you're confident in yourself you have more confidence to like make the right decision i think right you're like sure of yourself like right so yeah <laughs> I mean, this, so, and it doesn't end. Allow, allow, allow me, because mine are um, 38, and my middle child turns 30 uh, next week, and then I've got a 10 year old. Who, uh, yep. So I get a text from my soon to be 30 year old uh, a couple nights ago, and it's someone else has taken a picture of them jumping out of a perfectly good airplane. And I'm like, <laughs> I am pretty sure. Well, it's a perfectly good airplane. Like, thank I, you for that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I taught you better than that. I don't know what, you know, but then as a, you know, and I'm texting back and I'm like, and yeah, I'm like, well, good on you. But I mean, you know, that as the confidence and, but yeah, initially the parent, you know, kicks in and I'm like, you know, 
I had to hold your hand crossing the street to kindergarten. You know, what are you doing? Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Perfectly good you, airplane. You wait. You got you got bigger issues coming. So let me tell you. It's, Bracing myself. <laughs> brace, brace. Just take some notes because you're going to need them in about 20 years. Uh, Lord rose, Lord. what's your rose? What's your biggest rose? How about that? I was think I was thinking of this. Um, I mean, I feel I feel like I've had a lot of like isolated successes or isolated things I'm yeah. proud of, yeah. which are good. Like I ran a half marathon. A few good years for ago. you. Good like for that. You. That was cool. I mean, it didn't like change my life or anything, but it was. I was like, wow, that was like. Also, I was after my second child um like about a year and a half maybe after my second child i was like that's cool um i'm proud of like what i do at work how i've grown the program at work like that's good i'm proud of that um it's like top of my class in nursing school like those things and i was like is that mean like i'm proud of them but it's like does that truly like show success i don't know so i was i think it's just kind of like the culmination of ev of everything and like where my life is right now and yeah. like the, the accumulation of like choices that yeah. I've made, yeah. not that they've all been right or good or best or whatever, okay. but I think, I think it's just like, when I think about my husband and the type of person he is and my children and the type of people they're growing up to be and living in a place that I love and having a, you know, a job that I take seriously and I'm proud of and I'm dedicated to and the type of friends that I have, like the type of people that my friends are, it's like who I surround myself with. Like, I think just all of that, I'm like, I'm doing okay. Yeah. Like, I'm proud, like, I'm, I'm proud of that. Like, I, it's not always like, I mean, those things, I guess, kind of sound like, not like earth shattering, right? But it doesn't mean like, that's, you know, that's been- Any less, right. I mean, yeah, that's still, yeah. I, think it's, I would consider thus far overall assessment of, just my life choices, even to include failures, yeah. learning from failures, I guess I would consider like overall my biggest success. Yeah, you're where you're supposed to be. You truly believe you're where you're supposed to be. I think so. Cause when I think like, yeah. where else would I be right now? I'm like, no, I kind of like this. <laughs> not that there's not more that I want to do or right. hope to have happen, but like, right. if I really think about like right now, right here, right now, I'm like, I'm, I am I am blessed um yeah I think I'm doing okay good nice yeah final set uh you know we're earth and cup and so the earth of earth and cup is being grounded in whatever yeah. it means this is back to we need to define what terms and I'm going to purposefully not define it so that, <laughs> so the direct no you know <laughs> so um what if, what what would you say grounds you? What grounds you? So I to me in my head when I think grounding, I think it's like keeps you in touch with like reality. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I put my husband and my children for different reasons. Children because they don't let, let you get away with anything. Right? I mean <laughs> very quick. I mean, they will snap you right back into real life very quickly. Right. So that's just a constant, constant grounding. <laughs> But also I put my husband, and so I met my husband, it was either right before or right after I turned 18. Oh, wow, okay. Now, I'm about to be 38. So coming up on very close to 20 years, yeah. so yeah. more than half my life. So he has seen the absolute best in me. He has seen the absolute worst in me. Like he knows me like at my core. Yeah. He has been through the best times of my life with me, the worst, like, He's seen the whole, like, this is Stephanie, here she is. <laughs> and some somehow still was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, so. Um, Welcome to my life. That's right. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think he can just, like, he knows, he just, he knows me at my, you know, like, at my heart and my spirit. So I feel like there's not many people that know you in life that so just feel to be like yeah. kind of bring bring me in and be like what's going on or hey that doesn't seem you know something like you can just have real connection with like purest connection with someone um 
that keeps me like, okay, yeah, that he's, he's would be the best at that for me, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, nice. And then with the cup, the cup is this notion that we as humans are cups and we are able to be filled and emptied so that we can be filled again um, in this process of fill, emptying to be filled. So uh -huh. what empties your cup so that you can be filled again? And then what fills your cup? What, yeah. what fills you? How do you empty to be filled again? How about that? I think what fills me, if I'm if I'm understanding the question correctly. <laughs> well, whatever it, you did, I'm just like, right, this is not. <laughs> um, this says the top I'm of gonna... her nursing school class, right? It's like, <laughs> right. Don't cringe at me. Um, what I feel like fills me, right? So like kind of like nourish, like nourishes me um, on different levels. Music's always been big. Oh wow. Um, sometimes I play music to change my mood yeah. sometimes i play music to match my mood mm. like sometimes if you're sad maybe you don't want to happy maybe you just want to be sad you just need to be sad or angry what what i mean i literally have a playlist called like sad playlist <laughs> i'm not kidding because <laughs> sometimes you just but need not to really feel. yeah but not really right yeah yeah <laughs> like you just need to feel whatever it is yeah. um and if you cry or if you want to laugh, whatever it is, I, I, I have very strong associations with like music, even just particular musicians with certain memories or time in my life. So I feel like music and often at work, I'll be playing music while I work just to have it in the background. I mean, in the car, the radio is always on when I'm cooking. Usually I have to turn it up very loudly because there's three kids in the back. But I like to have just I don't know. Music just to me is is great. I think just the simple act of like catching up with friends. I have so many excellent friends from high school still. So 25, yeah. like coming up on 30 years later, just having, just reconnecting with a friend is very nourishing. Yeah. Um, and I love vo volunteering. Just giving back um, is, I think it gives you very good perspective on things. It reinforces gratitude, uh, which is very powerful. Um, in, in simple ways, like flu season's coming up. I'll be at our local medical clinic a few Saturdays coming up, administering flu vaccines. Like for you, simple, simple thing. I'll teach. Uh, I'll lead some exercise classes for this exercise program that they have um, for under and uninsured folks in our area. So I think volunteering, it's like you're give you you're giving service to other people, but you get just as much out of it, right? I I think so. I, yeah, I contend the same thing. Yeah. And then, oh, how do I empty? Well, I thought like I prioritize sleep. Good. I think people think, oh, you've got three kids full time. You must not sleep. Oh, no, I sleep. <laughs> I do. I get at least seven, close to eight hours of sleep every night. Good for you. Yeah. Like that is, I mean, I think that does both fills you up and empties you out. Right. right? I mean, I feel like it does, but 100%, it's yeah. restorative. Or body, spirit, mind, um, helps you process things to get them through, you know, through your system. So right. prioritizing sleep, huge. Good for you. And it's possible. I mean, it's possible with three kids and a hectic life and a, a husband who lives a hectic life. I mean, it's possible to get eight hours of sleep a night. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you have to luck out a little bit with having kids who are good sleepers. Right. Which means sometimes you gotta be like real strict. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But sleeping stuff from the time they're tiny, but yeah. right. I have great sleepers. And yeah, at some point I said, like, I've gotta go to bed because you can't deal with whatever's coming tomorrow. Because <laughs> right. it's coming. <laughs> because it's coming. Right, it's coming. I gotta try to put myself at least in a, a good frame of mind. Yeah. With sleep. Good for you. Thank you for sitting down, taking a sip of uh, me. Uh, you know, the last couple, of, it was, and it's interesting. I mean, uh, you know, we've done stuff like this, and then you know, and then so it's 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 cool to do some different stuff. So yeah, I look. Forward. I know we've met now, and we we're actually both real people. Well, yeah, we've we've actually we've we've actually now. had a lunch in the <laughs> same place. Yep. <laughs> right.
it's like yeah it's like oh my gosh you really are a real person you're not just a little thing on the screen. you're not a screen robot hey. right, right. That's cool. and blessings to you and your family and and everything and all the work you do and um yeah and this was fantastic so i, I want to thank yeah, you thanks for having me for i appreciate it i appreciate you asking me and your support and i know we'll just continue to do exciting things together so cool. that's cool, cool for me. All, right. all right bye mike <laughs>